Wraith Binder. Here's what's new. Check it out. Got a bunch of items you can buy now. Here in the well, this is your ship, sort of. I'm not exactly sure what will be the the eventual area where you go to buy items. Maybe you dock your ship somewhere and you can go to the, some cool space station and buy items there. Maybe there'll be more of like an item forge. But for now, I've got this system where you can basically just buy items on the ship and some animations for all buying those items and stuff too. So as you get near these, um, these items, you can pick them up and then it does this cool animation. And you've acquired the item and you can now use it. Um, so one of the next things I'll need to do is work on having two different sets of animations for all the characters um, so that you can start off with no weapon and then you pick up a weapon and you can from you know from then your your animations change so that you have a weapon in your hands and also it might be nice to have uh, your sword on your back or your weapon on your back or whatever it is uh, while you're on your ship so that would also be something where you would use this animation where you've got nothing in your hands um, but maybe your weapon if there is any is on your back so you can also buy things like a shield um, all sorts of other abilities and of course all the weapons oh, I've already got grenades oh crashed it let's see what happened Oh, Sprite Cache, Undead, Wrong Index. Working on that one still. Um, okay, so also, what's new is that um, in the actual data of the game, I've got the actual save data. It's uh, now separated a little bit. So, at first... Like in, also in Songbringer, you had just one character to manage. You have your, your one character that's, you know, the hero, Rock. And you've also got Jib in Songbringer where he kind of, you can kind of control him. But all the data is all based on one, um, one character. For this, for, so for, for Wraithbinder, I want to have something a little bit different. So I want you to be able to name your ship. I want your ship to be able to have a password as well. So when you're playing online multiplayer, you can have your friends like teleport to your ship if they have your password, and then maybe that maybe that just makes it really easy to go into battles together. Um, you can color your ship a different color. Your ship could have different items than you have, so maybe you can store stuff in a chest or locker on your ship, and then you would have like my oh my ship now has uh, um, this awesome axe, you know. I, I don't need to carry that anymore. I'll put it on my ship. Um, so your first, your first character, Crew Zero, is the name of your actual character. But then we've also got some other characters too. And this is so when you go into, um, when you go into battle, and you're first starting off, you're just learning Wraithbinder. You actually battle your crew. So your crew and, and you play the game Wraithbinder together, and whoever. Um, Basically, so you can, we can warp into battle, and the game can keep track of seven other different bots for for the time being that you are you just want to battle bots or you're just getting used to the game. Um, it actually tracks their progress, too, and when you I, buy items, they buy items. So this will be really interesting. Like, when I go buy a sword, all the other bots go and buy a weapon as well. If I buy uh, grenades, maybe one bot buys grenades, another one buys a ghost sword any kind of ranged weapon so as I'm as I'm leveling up and getting better and getting new items so are those seven different bots so those seven different bots will always sort of be at the same different power level that you are um, and as you go out and play other multiplayer battles maybe you're gonna play against um, some other people online all of the ex the experience and the and the uh, currency like credits or diamonds or whatever that's gonna be the bots will also gain um, some some of that currency too and they'll spend it whenever you spend it so they'll always be sort of equal with, with you they maybe not, are not going to be used in some multiplayer battles like if you're just battling all other players online you're, you're not going to ever need that those bots but when you're playing solo matches or when you're playing um, uh, 
you just want to play versus bots, then you've got these characters, which will make it nice and fair, and make it keep it interesting too. So you'll like one of you, maybe when you're browsing your ship. Let's go back to the ship. You either have to win that battle or just start over. So I'm just starting over real quick. Um. So maybe when you come back here to your ship, you'll see all seven of those bots. They're part of your crew, right? So why aren't they around the ship somewhere doing something? Maybe there, there's, a, there's a mess hall or an engine room or something where they can be spending their time. And, uh, and you can see them with the items that they buy. Eventually these items are going to be pretty neat. Like you'll be able to see uh, three different helmets. And like, whoa, this one helmet looks super cool. I'm going to buy that helmet. And, um, and then as soon as you buy stuff, so are in the background, so are all of your crew members. And, uh, um, and then when you go to the mess hall and you're like, whoa, there's my crew, one of my crew members. He's got a totally different helmet now. Like he bought stuff uh, in the meantime, something like that. So, and it's very easy like to do programming wise because all I'm doing is basically just creating um, different crew members in the data of this saves file. And this will make the game, I think, a lot more interesting. And the, really the whole point here is to give you something sort of like a private server in a way. It's like every time you start a game, a game slot or a character slot, you can think of it, of it kind of like a character slot, um, you're going to go create a whole new crew and a whole new ship. So it's kind of interesting. You get you're getting more than just a character out of this game. You're getting a ship and a crew full of seven people. And maybe also when you go to the the mess hall or whatever, you can talk to crew members and change their name or change their um, change what items they've bought, stuff like that. That's probably something I, that uh, I would save for last to do with something like this because this is so easy what I've implemented already. Um, and it just adds a lot of fun to the game, a really interesting thing. And eventually maybe these uh, these guys will have other stats too. Like for every character you track a uh, number of wins, um, um, damage dealt on average per match and things like that. So that will be pretty interesting to look at characters and like inspect them. For some people that love those kind of numbers and games, it's that will be a fun thing to, to check out. So um, yeah. Lots of fun stuff I'm, I'm adding to Wraith Binder right now. It's a very cool time. Oh, and also, um, I could teleport between worlds finally without crashing the game. That's pretty cool. So if we start off here on the ship and we go to um, battle. And yeah. then when I go to battle, everything will look right. But also, it will be able to rotate the camera and won't crash and all that. Well, let's, let's hope it doesn't crash. Cool. Didn't do that sprites I'm getting, but this is super cool because before, uh, before I fixed this bug, you would not be able to rotate the camera without crashing, the, crashing the game, and the whole like, all oh, the clouds and everything just squished into one, and it was all because, um, all because the camera rotation was wrong. So, basically now it's got something in on world creating that sets up the camera every time it creates a world, it makes sure the camera is set correctly for its rotations. And before it was it was clearing out the camera rotations and um, and then never setting them again before it created a world. So what was happening is it was actually tilting the camera back down. Right now it's the camera's tilted downward at 30 degrees. And what it was doing was it was clearing that rotation. So it was looking straight on at every single one of these sprites. So essentially a three dimensional world became a two dimensional world and every single sprite and voxel and everything was in one line as if it were a 2d platformer game or something like that. So that's why it would crash. It would be like, Oh my gosh, everything's on the screen. It would just dump out because it couldn't handle that many sprites. And well, maybe it wasn't sprites. It was all, mostly voxel stuff. Everything went wrong haywire without the right rotation. So that was part of it. Another thing was the camera extents. But anyways, bug fixed. And that's that's a cool thing to have there. So thanks for watching this video. Thanks for keeping tabs on Wraithbinder. I appreciate it. Can't wait to make this multiplayer game. And uh, can't wait to play it with y'all. So catch you on the next video.